So, one thing that's for certain on this hunting trip is I'm really struggling with the filming versus the hunting. And I'm messing up big time on my camera stuff. Um, so day one, when those two does come, I think I've got the camera pointed. I have it attached to the bill of my hit, uh, cap. Um, I haven't bought a fancy uh, mount for it that goes on your stand or hooks to a tree. So I have it on the bill of my cap and I think I have it on and, and I think I'm filming it, the whole encounter. I think this is great footage. So I get, I get home and, and I realize there's no, there's nothing on the camera. And then I realize I just, I never actually turned it on. So that's a huge error. Fail. I, I am failing at this camera work. So, and I'm struggling. I can't get my mind wrapped around, do I want to film the encounter or do I want to hunt? And so right now, I'm not doing good at either. I'll get there. It just takes time. I'm an old man, so it takes longer to learn some of these things, I think. So anyway, fail on the camera work. I apologize for that. It's just, it's ridiculous how bad, how bad I am. I just, I, I should have checked to make sure it was on, but it went on. So there you go. It happens. All right. Dave out. Hey, it's Dave. So up here in a tree stand in West Virginia. And I'm hunting with my friend, Dave Wetzel. He's on further up the ridge. So he's got me up on a, on a ridge looking over, uh, I guess it's a crossing of like three paths. And he's got some corn out. You can bait here in West Virginia. So um, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm in a ladder stand and uh, let me flip you around so you can see what's going on. All right, there you go. So, give your perspective. That's, that's where the stand is. So, straight out. Got a clean pile. There's a bridge here that goes on the ways. There's a trail that you can come and see up there. And there's another one right beside me because down over here. against me 100% is the wind is blowing um, right in the direction where it seemed most of the deer came from. So I don't know how much that will affect it. Um, we'll see. All right. Great battle. So that first night, despite all the wind and freezing, um, I did see two, two does. Um, one, a little, one was bigger than the other. And they walked and there was like a log laying down that you'll see, and they walked behind me. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, well, I do know. It was 22 yards. So, um, and the one stood broadside, and I could have, I could have put a shot on it. I had the crossbow raised, but, and then you know, eventually it noticed me, and they both walked on and passed. <clears throat> they didn't run off, and they didn't snort. So it's interesting. Interesting encounter, but I didn't because I'm this property that I'm on the one that uh, Dave lets me hunt with him on is uh, There's a lot of nice bucks on it. So for, I have to only two days. So I thought I'd wait So I passed on that. So that was day day one um, All right Hey, it's Dave. So I'm here at uh, Wetzel home in uh, Ohio and uh, so last night's hunt it was windy, yeah, I think that was it. And I was cold. Um, it was a tough day of hunting. Uh, for me it was, maybe not for everybody, but for me it was. I saw a doe and then a smaller doe. And then uh, Dave, he saw 11 deer where he was. And he's got some really good video that I'll share with you uh, close up.
All right, let me turn you around though. I want to show you this house. Hold on a minute. Dave out. I'm going to pan through. This is the living room. Some beautiful mounts. Now you see Dave is a very accomplished hunter and so is his wife, Tracy. They have done an excellent job, I believe, of decorating and displaying. It's amazing. All right. So, there's Dave, Tracy. Hey. Hello. Thanks for letting me stay here. Thanks for letting me hunt. Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Now I got to show you the bedroom. Hold on. All right, this is the bedroom that I stayed in. And so here's the bed. And then top of the bed and just rotate around. That is just amazing. Super cool. All right, Dave. So, day two, last day of the hunt here in West Virginia. So, anyways, just got up in the stand. It's uh, right around 1.30ish. And, uh, anyway, I hope for something good. There's, like, no wind, thank goodness. And uh, it's 54 out. So, looking for a productive hunt. And uh, hopefully things work out tonight. And I don't fool around and mess up filming with this thing i thought i had it working right but man i messed up and did not get it working right so we'll work on that that's on me all right wish me luck Dave out. so day two i see checking on lily i see um not oh i'd say about an hour after i got a stand it's a nice day it's cool there's no breeze and um, on my left side, uh, which, you, you know, if you shoot left-handed, it's the hardest to, to get a drawing, right? Because you got a twist. So and you're in a tight stand, and it's harder. So but anyways, I see antlers coming at me straight at, well, almost straight at me. I'd say like at a, uh, say if noon's one as uh, straight, this, they're coming at like 11 o'clock. So... Um, and I, I put my, I have my crossbow up and I have the uh, scope on it. And so as it, it's just walking, it's got its head, head down and it raises up every now and then. That's when I can see the antlers. It's blocked by leaves. So I'm not getting a good look at the size of it or anything. And it's a very quick encounter. So as it's, it's walking towards me and it gets, uh, say it's right at 30 yards, there's uh, a break in the, in the leaves and it stops there and it looks up over the leaves and so I can get a full look of its head and it turns its head, looks at me and it sees me up in the stand. Um, I'm not moving, but it sees me and it stops and it, and it, you know, tilts its head. It's still straight on me. I can't shoot. At least I don't know how to shoot a, a bow at a, something coming straight on and be sure that I'm going to be successful. Um, so anyways, um, I sit there and wait and um, it contemplates and it decides to go um, back down the trail. It turns and then walks straight away from me. So I get a nice view of its butt. And then my uh, buddy Dave, he sees it later. Um, he says it's wide tined and uh, I just saw the height of the tines. I had a little buck fever right now and then. So um, anyways, it was a great encounter, but I couldn't get a shot. So anyway, that was the buck. All right, so day two, I saw the buck, right? So about five o'clock, I started getting encounters with those. I had three different encounters. I put up, that's four. I only had three. One was, one seemed to linger on almost through, from five until dark, back and forth. So the simplest one I'll say is around 5.30 or so, I saw a single deer and I don't know if it was a doe or uh, maybe it's a um, uh, like a young buck, you know, 
with no, it's an antlerless buck, you know, that's been separated from its mom. I don't know. But it's by itself and it's walking along the ridge line really slow. And I see it. And so I think I'm filming it. And I you know, move my head watching it. And you can see it in the distance. And I'm thinking, wow, I'll be able to zoom in on that. It's really cool because you can see the background of the hillside in the back. I thought, oh, it's awesome. <sighs> All right. That didn't happen. I'll tell you about my filming issue here in a minute. Then, a group of deer, there was four of them, led by a doe that, um, and they're all does, four together. And the doe is like almost a reddish dark brown. The other three doe are the gray color that I'm seeing on almost all the other deer. And this reddish brown one is beautiful. And I see it and um, it's about 60 yards off. And that's the one I don't see initially. I see two of the gray deer. And so I turn in my stand and I'm looking down there at it, you know, and the third one busts me. But you know, they don't do anything. They just kind of trot off and snort a couple times. And I think, okay, encounter over. I also think I'm filming this. I'm, you know, got my head looking at it thinking, oh, okay, pretty cool. He's 60 yards off. Definitely not going to be able to shoot. And they're just, you know, maybe 20, 15 yards inside of a tree line back there. And then I hear more snorting and I look and I turn and look kind of behind the tree and I see that reddish brown doe. And it's, you know, it's, st it's standing at its ground. The, the three gray or grayish deer have, does have run off. And it, the reddish one standing in its ground, and it's just going back and forth along the wood line, snorting at me. It's thinking that something wrong up there by that tree. I can't figure it out. That's what that doe's thinking. So, anyways, that goes on, and it actually goes on pretty much the whole rest of the night. <laughs> in and out of that tree, that deer goes. And if it sees movement in that tree, it snorts and it paws and, you know, makes a big deal, but it never falls or runs off about so that's the second encounter the third about 30 minutes later the um out of where the buck came i see a couple doe walk um along the lower end of that ravine and uh, just along the hillside but mostly on the low part of the ravine and then they're going to walk and it looks like they're going to turn and go behind me at about the 60 yard place um not too far from where that doe had been weaving in and out the dark reddish brown one. And so I don't initially see them. So I um, am looking back at that reddish brown one. And when I turn to go and look at the other, the noise I hear, that's when the does bust me. And of course they make a noise and run off. And I think I got that on film. I didn't get any of it on camera. Um, the reason is I had my camera pointed too um, close to the stand. I had it pointed down to capture about 20 yards and in, and I didn't have it set up to go out any further. So another big fail. I didn't, I'll show you what I got. I got some footage and I'll run through it so you can see, but there's nothing exciting. Um, so I apologize, big fail. I didn't get it done. And so, I uh, had an encounter with the buck uh, that I couldn't shoot and then those does and so I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great hunt. I had a great uh, time with Dave and his wife, uh, Tracy. They're very kind people and very generous, uh, you know, provide for me breakfast and supper and lunch and just always, you know, there to take care of me and um, so I appreciate it. Uh, it's always great to spend some time with friends and so I value that part of it, but um, I didn't make it happen this year, so I didn't, didn't, get, a, didn't get a deer. Maybe I can get back, get back up there later in the year. Um, I know Dave's having some really good success. He sent me a picture of a buck he got um, last night. So it was, and that was a wide body buck, so it was good. So uh, anyways, they're up there and maybe I'll get a shot later on. Uh, we'll see how the, the season goes, but now I'm off to Virginia next. So, all right, so that's it. those were my encounters, and uh, Dave out.
right, so if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Probably one of the more boring deer hunting videos you've ever seen because there's no real action in it. And uh, I can't do anything but say, hey, I failed as a cameraman. I didn't make it happen. Um, I did have a little bit of deer action, but I didn't film it. Dave Wetzel did, so there you go. <laughs> so anyways, thank you for watching. Make kindness your business, and uh, Dave out.